Thank you very much, Eric. Those are very kind words. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, as, as Eric said, uh, I currently work for Scalmia um, in the group, since recently in the group in charge for uh, our management systems in, in the embedded parts of the company and the digital thread uh, within that parts of the company. Um, and as Eric has also mentioned here, uh, let's see, yeah. As Eric has also mentioned, I probably have, uh, just give me a second, I'm very sorry. Uh, but, but I probably have, yes, let's try that again. Um, yeah, um, so I work in a position of a meta developer. I work with methods, processes, and IT support uh, for functional safety, cybersecurity, software update management. These are all hot topics recently, and, and they jointly form our embedded systems management system. Uh, and I guess the connection for today here is, is the IT support that we also work with. How do our tools support the, the methods that we define? Um, and previously, I was a PhD student at KTH for a number of years at the Division of Mechatronics, uh, working with the sharing safety of, of uh, yeah, product families, as Eric put it, uh, by using assurance cases. And uh, prior to that, uh, been a long, long time ago, I was an R&D engineer in, in the medical domain. Um, and a little bit about uh, Scania here. Uh, we're a pretty old company, currently members of the Volkswagen Group with a number of other heavy vehicle manufacturers. Uh, and our main products are um, uh, heavy trucks and buses and a few additional things, but these are the main products. Um, and we exist uh, worldwide, uh, both production-wise and sales-wise. With around 50,000 employees. And the majority of our engineers, well, almost all of them, sit in uh, Södertälje in Sweden, uh, with around 2,000 people working with electronics as software, or what we call the embedded part of the, of the product. Um, and roughly we sell around 100,000 vehicles per year. Uh, and now we're up to maybe 400,000 that are actually connected uh, and, and using our connected uh, services. Um, and today I will try to, th this is sort of a high level presentation. It is uh, maybe an organizational approach to OSLC more than anything else. Uh, so I'll briefly describe our context and the trends that we're facing and what these assurance cases are and why do we need them. Uh, and then I'll talk a bit about what is our current status and our long-term vision for creating assurance cases uh, by using uh, technologies such as OCLC and, and linked data. Um, and the ideas in this presentation uh, are not purely mine. I mean, this has been a long collaboration between KTH and Scania, including Jad in this room and Andre and, and many other people. So uh, yeah, I guess, thank you all of you guys for bringing us up, up to this point. Um, yeah. So if I try to summarize very briefly what is specific about uh, Scania is, is that we don't engineer products, like specific products one by one. Uh, we engineer the, we, we design a family of products. Um, and the family is quite big. I mean, some estimates say that at any given point in time, we can produce 10 to the power of 65 of different configurations of our vehicle. Um, and that is uh, that comes from, from this uh, Scania modular system and this modular way of thinking. So the electrical system of our product is modular in the sense that you can relocate functionality from one system to another. You can remove a system, you can add a system. Um, same thinking is applied uh, in the design of the chassis and the drivetrain. Uh, a truck that has uh, three axles is simply a truck with two axles plus an additional one, um, uh, nothing more than that. 
the buses we produce, a bus is just a truck that has a different cab on top of it. Um, and then all the different kinds of trucks are just a, a minor variation of this core product line, as it's called, or as, as here, and it, uh, sorry, uh, Eric called it product family. So this in effect means that whenever you ask a question about something in Scania, about a specific system or a software, you're always talking about the specific context, at which point in time and for which configurations are you asking the, the thing, your, your question that, you, that you're interested in. Um, so defining uh, the possible configurations, how they're composed of all these parts, uh, the, the, the global configuration management that was mentioned in the previous presentation, it's quite complicated and quite sophisticated. So like, I would say maybe that's one of the uh, defining characteristics of all this kind of product. Um, and uh, since lately, I mean, we're not immune to the trends in automotive and maybe in general in industry. I mean, we have electrification, uh, we, ho we have autonomy, uh, we barely even sell vehicles, we sell services and uh, syst transport systems. Um, and that, of course, implies uh, a need for more holistic and systematic way in assuring safety, uh, in assuring cybersecurity, in making sure that the uh, software updates in, in the field are actually correct and do not compromise the integrity of the vehicle. Um, and then to keep up with the competition, of course, we need to deliver more often and more quickly. And, and you can imagine that all these aspects put quite a lot of strain on an already complicated way of working where you have this uh, product line instead of uh, in individual systems. Um, and now a bit about assurance cases. So, an assurance case is a, is a structured argument supported by some evidence, and it is intended to justify that a system is acceptably assured uh, with respect to concern in the operating environment you intend to deploy it. And examples of these concerns are safety. So if you want to create a safety assurance case, that would be about providing an argument. Why do you think your product is assured uh, with respect to safety in the environment you plan to deploy it. You can produce a cybersecurity case, you can produce all kinds of um, assurance cases. And the assurance cases are becoming much more important because they are one of the most well-known, if not the only holistic, systematic, and reasonably well-established uh, industrial practice to, to declare your argument about whether something is safe or cyber secure and actually try to convince someone in, in that. Um, and to give you just a hint at how this might work, um, let's say that here, let's say this is a very small assurance case. And this top claim here could be software component X satisfies property Y. Uh, and then you could have sub claims. So this is your argument. It says, okay, property Y was specified in a requirement specification and the uh, verification reports show that the software satisfies property Y. Therefore, the software satisfies property Y. And then you need to provide some evidence for these two claims you're providing. So here for the, um, for the specification of the property Y, you could provide some review reports of your specification, for example. And for the, the, the successful testing, you could provide some test results uh, out, out of your uh, test management system. And then basically you need to explain why is this evidence sufficient to conclude that this claim is true. So in this case of specifying property Y within the requirements, you can argue that you have um, uh, experienced uh, requirements analysts and uh, or you could argue that the property was formally specified and possible to analyze by computers. So you can go about this in, in many ways to explain why a certain artifact 
uh, implies that a certain claim is true. And then if you think about this, I mean, you, you, you start, if we start with such a low level, like a software component does something, which is then integrated into systems, and these are integrated into some vehicle level functionalities, and then you have the variants of your vehicle. And then in addition to all of that, you also have the functionality in the field that updates the vehicle. This becomes quite big and quite complex and uh, quite difficult to manage. Um, and also important thing to note here is that the assurance case with its claims uh, uh, basically says, okay, this is my claim about safety cyber security, but it actually has many references to many things across the complete life cycle. These artifacts that you use to uh, uh, support your argument, you, you, you need to refer to them somehow. So it's a, it's a big web of references also this assurance case thing. And uh, currently, assurance cases are required by some standards. Um, for example, this one for functional safety or this one for cybersecurity. But uh, they are becoming even more emphasized in upcoming standards like, like uh, UL4600 or, or the upcoming ISO 5083. And the idea is basically to say, OK, what you need to do is to produce an assurance case and, and set that mindset in the beginning. And basically use the assurance case as you gradually build it up as a basis for tracking of, of your status of your product with respect to concerns such as safety or cybersecurity. And the idea is that this will be truly a living artifact that spans across the whole life cycle and it's managed for many years. I mean, a, tr a truck can be used for 20 years and you need to maintain an assurance case for that truck. So the problems with the sharing cases are basically everything is a problem. Uh, they're difficult to build, to review. It's quite big to maintain. I mean, how do you manage changes to reuse parts of one assurance case and put it into another one? Um, and all this typically comes from the sheer size of it. It's a lot of things to consider. Um, and the support to structure these arguments is there is some support, uh, but you're quite free to do whatever you want as long as you think you can make your argument. Uh, and then really showing that a certain evidence implies a certain claim is also in itself a, a headache. Um, so in, our thinking is that but since we, we are required to produce assurance cases, um, to manage such large and complex artifacts uh, throughout the whole life cycle and for many years, we really need automation and, and good tool support to work with this. And this is where this presentation actually starts. And now when I give you some context. Um, so first thing that we have to do and the basic prerequisite for all of this is to have uh, data digitalized and it integrated uh, in between the tools. Um, as, as I've explained previously, this, is, this document is, is a bunch of references to many different things. Um, and also to produce the evidence, sometimes you need to analyze these artifacts. So they need to be integrated between the cells so you could actually run your analysis. Um, and in many cases nowadays, we still have documents if we talk about uh, architectures and requirements and specifications and, and all kinds of low level data structures. And what we want to go to is some sort of a, here it says a database, but in essence, and uh, we, want, we want to transition to uh, having a data set that actually information uh, that we can uh, read, analyze, refer to, uh, and use in a much more data driven way than, than what we can do today. And the important thing is that in this journey, we need to um, eternally agree on something that we often refer to as the common information model. So basically, what are the things that we talk about? What are the relations between the things we talk about? What are the constraints over the things that we talk about? And things that are our artifacts uh, and specify that really well and in detail, and only then we can build uh, assurance case automation on, on top of that. 
Um, I'm just checking the time. Yes. Um, so here it becomes a bit more uh, a bit more detailed. So the first thing we 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 can look at the problem from this perspective. So we have the different uh, discipline tools in our company that that do different kinds of things. And uh, the idea here is to actually um, uh, provide sort of a linked data information layer. So basically this, this data set we are after that an assurance case generator could uh, query, consume, analyze, and build assurance cases uh, based on that. And a few important points here is that this information layer is not intended to be storage, so it, it will not compete with any of these tools. So it's just a representation. And once when we define how this information layer looks like, we abstract away the, the, the details of the tools. So this is a completely tool independent uh, data set. And also the tools here are not aware of each other. So if these tools, two tools communicate somehow through the link data layer, they should not be aware of each other. And then of course, uh, the semantics or the meaning of the data that we find in this information layer is defined uh, um, in a number of link data schemas. You'll see what they talk about uh, soon. And, and the, the merge of these schemas is actually what gives us sort of this common in, information model. An important thing to, to note is that this information layer we, we create by exposing information from uh, individual tools through adapters, as, as you probably all know about. But what we do here, we only build adapters that conform to the OSLC core specification. So basically, we are after uh, you know, all the services. We are not after the domain specifications because essentially we have our own. And this is what these link data schemas are, our domain specifications. Um, and the idea, and I mean, this is the, the current architecture of, of the assurance case tool, um, is the following. So here in the heart of it, we have the, the Eclipse Leo uh, that we use to define the link data schemas. Uh, basically, we define each adapter for each tool within Eclipse Leo. And for those of you who have used it, we, we, we generate uh, uh, the majority of the adapter for a specific tool from the, the link data schema we, we create in Leo. And then that tool exposes information to the link data layer and all the tools do that. Now on the other side, we have the assurance case tool. So in the assurance case tool, we need to write what our claims are. Our products are safe because this and that. Uh, but now we do it in a sort of a data-driven way. So a product is probably uh, an entity in the link data schema. So writing the claims is actually over the elements of uh, the schema. And then we get a very tight connection between what the assurance case states and how it corresponds to the actual information in the link data layer. Um, and then in addition to writing the claims, we also write analysis operations that we attach to the claims. And we say, okay, for this claim to be true, this property must be satisfied. And this property could be a query uh, that can be answered over the link data layer, could be an analysis of some kind, and you will see soon what to talk about. But in essence, the assurance case tool, then uh, uh, you, you can say uh, in the end, okay, please verify my, my assurance case claims, which will uh, be translated into, okay, get me the relevant information from the link data layer and verify that all of these properties that must be true for the claims to be true are actually true. So we run some analysis in, inside of uh, this box here. And then if everything is okay, we produce an assurance case report. If it's not okay, we again produce some sort of a report uh, to indicate what, what the problem is. And a bit more detail about the, the, the Link data schema adapter. So as I said, each tool has uh, one adapter, at least one adapter actually could have many. And each adapter has a corresponding schema, so something like this. 
And these schemas define the, the hard constraints in the data. So whatever comes out of the, of the adapter implicitly from a certain tool must conform to whatever we have specified here. So basically classes, subclasses, relations, cardinalities, uh, and, and stuff like that um, that's specified here. Um, and now given all this, this is a very high level architecture of how uh, uh, our assurance case uh, tool currently works. It's under quite heavy development, but this is what we currently have. Um, so we have the Eclipse Leo to, uh, to create the schemas out of which we produce the adapters. The schemas are synchronized with um, a textual editor, a textual model editor that we've developed in Xtext. So it's a place where you can write your claims, you can write these expressions you want to verify, you can create your structure or the assurance case and so on. Um, and uh, for example, what is a safe vehicle? That is what you would write here. Uh, or what is sufficient testing, that's what you would write here. And then of course, uh, we can visualize what we write here in the textual language. Um, and we also verify the structural correctness of the assurance case uh, with a, a number of backend components. Um, since this is object oriented, we would basically verify the object oriented aspect of the model plus some specific constraints we have on, on the assurance cases themselves. Um, and this textual model editor here can express a bit more constraints than what we can have in, in uh, Eclipse Leo. So for example, here we could say, oh, I want these two attributes of these two classes always to have the same string value, um, which basically means that we have um, also a data quality checking component here. Uh, sometimes we do it internally with these backend components. Sometimes we rely on Shuffle, for example. Um, Just for your info, five more minutes is what you have. Yes, yes, no problem. I'll be done in... <laughs> To three minutes, thank you. Um, anyway, once the model is in place, basically we can uh, execute uh, all the verifications we have in mind and say, hey, I have these claims and these properties. Can you please verify this for me? Which will in turn go to all the Sparkle endpoints here, retrieve the data, run the analysis of different kinds and either produce uh, the assurance case with all the recorded evidence or say no I'm missing some things you, you need to you need to do something about it. Um, so far we ran one case study on one system to verify the concept the electromagnetic parking brake system so basically we expressed the model of okay this is how systems look in Scania and uh, these are the claims that we want to have related to systems and then we took one system uh, and because that's the data that we had and, and ran all the checks that we want and produced this um, uh, assurance case structure. Each of these modules internally has, has more, more information. So um, next steps, I mean, we're trying to, currently trying to scale up. Um, we're continuously working on creating more uh, link data schemas for more tools in order to automate more, uh, more parts of the assurance case creation. Uh, and we're also working on creating a web-based UI for this assurance case tool. Um, something we, we work a lot on is different kinds of guideline documents. Since we have our own uh, domains, so to say, and we do not use the OSLC domain specifications, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, defining, okay, how does version management work? How do you manage your eyes? What are the modeling patterns that we use for the linked data schemas? Um, and since lately we also work on, on, on the infrastructure to expose and maintain the link data layer, uh, we're considering building adapters without Leo for the tools that, for example, don't like Java and uh, actually slowly getting to a point where this link data information layer exists in a production environment uh, that we can use for, for real. So in summary, assurance cases are quite important in automotive and are becoming even more important. Uh, and basically this, their size and complexity warrant the need for sophisticated tool support. Um, that in itself requires cross-tool data integration, 
And for years, we think that OCLC and Link Data are a good candidate for this. And as, as the name of OCLC says, life cycle, an insurance case needs to reference and analyze many artifacts across the complete life cycle. Um, um, and basically the core specification will follow for API development. And we put a lot of effort on, on, uh, on uh, data integration on the level of these uh, schemas or information models um, that we later on use to write uh, assurance cases over. Uh, so sorry if, if this took a bit long time, but uh, that was it. And you have some references here. Maybe I would point you to this one, building a web-based federated tool chain from a few years ago. I think that might be interesting read to get a bit more insight into this. Many thanks, Damien, for, for an excellent presentation. Uh, do type your questions in the Q&A. And, and in the meantime, I'm, I'm having one question regarding uh, si since you are just conforming to to the uh, the standard uh, or, or, or the basic uh, OSLC standard and not not the more specific ones, are there any? Uh, I mean, can you can you share some rationale for for doing things this way, or? Um, I would say it's. Um... Maybe two things. One is a legacy. If, if you go into, for example, configuration and change management uh, defined in OSLC, that's not exactly how Scania does things. So that would require some hacking to adopt it. Um, and in general, that holds for other, for example, requirements uh, uh, domain. We, we have our own structure for requirements and methods to work with them. And, and we basically want to be able to express those instead of using the OCC ones. And um, I mean, that may be summarized into, we want to be flexible perhaps is the, the key answer. Good. And then we have a, um, a question from Clement Fortin. How do you integrate these with the engineering and manufacturing change management processes? Uh, well, I mean, we have we have a, a, a global common uh, change management method in Scania that works ninety eight percent of the time, I would say, or maybe a bit less. Uh, but the the link data schemas themselves all depend on this common uh, common way for change management. So essentially the adapters cannot even expose information unless they conform to this way of um, uh, managing changes. I don't know if that was a, but we have a small meta model that says, okay, for things in Scania, uh, change management is done by connecting object X to this thing and uh, you must, have things in status of that kind in a certain point of time. So that's, there's a small uh, meta model that defines that and all, all link data schemas and all adapters must conform to that part. Uh, 